the greatest stress. How, if some day or night, a demon were to sneak after you into your loneliest loneliness and say to you, This life as you now live it and have lived it, you will have to live once more and innumerable times more. And there will be nothing new in it but every pain and every joy and every thought and sigh and everything immeasurably small or great in your life must return to you, all in the same succession and sequence. Even this spider and moonlight between the trees, and even this moment and I myself, the eternal hourglass of existence is turned over and over, and you with it, a dust grain of dust. Would you not throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse the demon who spoke thus? Or did you once experience a tremendous moment when you would have answered him, You are a god, and never have I heard anything more godly. If this thought were to gain possession of you, it would change you, as you are, or perhaps crush you. The question in each and everything, do you want this once more, and innumerable times more, would weigh upon your actions as the greatest stress? Or how well disposed would you have to become to yourself and to your life to crave nothing more fervently than the ultimate eternal confirmation and seal? Living the same life what is up, Artemers? I hope everyone is doing super duper well on this beautiful spring solstice or equinox. I can never remember which one is which, um, but you know, moving on. I thought it would be really fun to talk about Nietzsche's thought experiment, The Eternal Recurrence. It's pretty much all summed up in these super large quotes, but what would you do if you had to live your life a million times over? the same exact life. And not necessarily like a time loop situation, but if we take a look at characters like Marlon Wayans in the movie Elevator Wedding movie, he does get a lot of advantages because he goes through time and time and time again because he learns what everything is, where it is, who people are, blah blah blah. I don't believe that's exactly what Nietzsche is putting down here, but that would also be a really fun thing to talk about too, I can't lie. I am also really excited to talk about today. I'm turning 25. Uh, March is my birthday month. It is at the end of the month, so it's like a week plus away. Either way, I'm terrified. 25, that's the quarter life crisis classically, hopefully living to 100. <laughs> but in either case, what a perfect time to talk about the eternal recurrence. I figured a more casual video would be a perfect time, as it is sort of a thought experiment. It should be like a fly off the seat of your pants sort of thing, right? To explain Nietzsche's quote, what if you were to live once more or innumerable times over again without anything being different at all? Would you like it or would you do something different about it? One thing that humans often live with is regret, and so in hearing this, I think people would often think to, no, this sounds terrible, I've been through the most ungodly, awful things you could ever think of, and I would only want a better life for myself if I could live any more life ever again. And other people would probably say the complete opposite, yes. I would want to live this life a billion infinite times over again. I couldn't be happier with how it's been and how it probably will be. Between both of these two things, there can be a huge difference in, you know, perspective, where people come from, if you come from a lot of money versus a little, if you, you know, have had to deal with a lot of stress by choice. I think it's a lot easier for some people to say yes. The eternal recurrence would be so easy to say yes to, but then the flip side does exist. What I think is the biggest takeaway here is that you shouldn't live with regret. In looking at time as a more unchangeable thing, and you know, the reality that we do live in versus the potentials the thought experiment has, you can't change the past. 
And to be upset about it can sometimes just be painful and added pain to the universe that no one asks you to do. But I think mostly what I'm getting at is the eternal recurrence is such a personal thing that like the thought experiment can't be blanketed towards every human being. Every life on earth is so different that to say everyone should agree with this. I don't think so. I don't think so. Even from Nietzsche's quote, there's people who think that this would be from, you know, a curse from a demon or a godly gift from a god. What's unfortunate is how true this is. For me, being that I'm 25, a quarter of my life is now gone. I would like to now speak on a more personal level. I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm fine to go through life exactly how I have. It's the only way to get where I am exactly as I am right now. If you disagree with me, that's your prerogative, but realistically, the only way to get where you are today is to go through every single painful thing you have in the past. As I always say, Nietzsche said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And so to live with any regret about anything that's caused you pain or suffering in life does go against Nietzsche's philosophy, point blank. But does this lead to a sort of mentality that's very perfectionistic? Potentially. I know I have a very perfectionistic personality. I think the biggest thing is when you can do something about something you don't like, why not change it? Why not do what you can? Why not do the hustle culture in your own healthy, safe, not hustle culture sort of way? Why not sacrifice years of your life to go to college to then move on to a career? You know, sure, I'm in debt, but I did make lots of friends and I do have a career, so I was one of the lucky few who got what they paid for, basically. <laughs> It's really unfortunate that the other side of the coin exists for everything I talk about and it always comes to mind. It's hard to even like stay on track to not talk about the bad and the good. It's all beyond good and evil. You can't change the past. I'm sorry. You can't. I do want to say in terms of maybe like being, I don't know, four years plus minus into a YouTube channel, 500 subscribers is not a lot. So maybe I can start advertising, you know, PRing, you know, not paying for, but like community outreaching. I didn't even share my last video other than Insta stories. But that's not really a regret in how much I've put effort into, you know, something that hasn't given out much because it has given out so much. It's a very small community, but it's a tight awesome community. To which in my last video I said again, I'm sorry, I'm the worst at communicating. I, I have a hard time reading. It's very ironic to my degree and I'll tell you that. But 25 and no regrets is pretty good. Do I have wants and needs? Yes. But can that only be for the future? Yeah. So to my future self, you should be hanging out with more people. I really need to hang out with more people, but I am very grateful that I have not caught COVID, so that's great. No regrets there. When it comes to the future, in the whole living uh, uh, the same life innumerable times over, I'm not really sure what I want my future to entail. I am just looking forward, and I really appreciate what the universe suggests. I think. I don't know how, how the universe works, but I like it. <laughs> I think it turned out okay. When it comes to daily situations where you say to yourself, do I want this again over innumerable times more? Taking a page out of classic utilitarianism, you could always set things to priority level in a whole like classic pick your own battle situation where maybe things can be stressed about. Maybe you have other things to stress about more. Maybe 
you have to live with the fact that you can't stress about things. That's one thing that I have honestly had a big time dealing with. I don't know if I've said this yet, but it's like 1.30 in the morning and I have had the craziest work month, um, so I am exhausted, but mostly turning 25 is really stressful. I'm a little scared. What does it mean? I don't know. In terms of classic societal concepts, there's a there's some sort of quarter life crisis. I'm supposed to go crazy. Jokes on them. I am already crazy. I read Nietzsche. I think about this stuff already and too much. You know, <laughs> who am I? Who are you? What is anyone? Why does anything matter? It all matters. Make your own values. Everything should value throughout all time and space infinitely. It goes on and on and on. But more than anything, I think this is one of Nietzsche's little sprinkles of just optimism. Is it godly or is it a demon? He adds a lot more weight to the godly end. If you ask me, I would love to hear your thoughts on the eternal recurrence and if you would like to live your same exact life the same innumerable amount times over. But if not, if you don't want to share any details, blah blah blah, I, I totally understand, you know? It's a very personal subject when you think about it because it has to do with the deepest, darkest things you've ever dealt with. Do you want to deal with those again? If not, you'll say no. If yes, you'll say yes. It basically is a question you'd ask if people, if you want to know if people have dealt with something they'd never want to deal with ever again. Or maybe something completely amazing that they want over and over. Either way, I think it might be too personal to ask. So if you don't want to share your thoughts, I totally understand. <laughs> but if you want to share your thoughts on the experiment itself, I am really like inspired and encouraged by Nietzsche. I've never heard of another philosopher writing about like a thought experiment. Just like something to think about versus like a whole new philosophy to follow what morals are. If you know of any other uh, thought experiments that we could talk about, that would be super lovely. For me, the eternal recurrence is such an easy answer, man. Just, it means don't live with any regrets. Easy peasy. Even those five words are fully packed in and of themselves with like just view the world better than it is, understand you can't change things, be more optimistic and less pessimistic. It is a fully loaded task and ask and like personal practice philosophy that you have to do every single day to not see things as bad and to not regret them in the future. But after you've practiced that for years and years, easy peasy, no regrets, boom. Question answered. If you have another thought experiment that you know of, I would absolutely love to wrap my mind around it. I never really say this, but I got like a series going, like Ask Artem Anything. If you have a question that you have, just hashtag it, Ask Artem Anything, and I will potentially make a whole freaking video about it. Okay, I really have to go because my mouth just feels awful. So, know that I love you guys and I couldn't not make this video even though it's just been literally, I need to post it tomorrow, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Love talking to you. We've hit freaking 500 subscribers! Like, half of a thousand people follow me. That's insane. I cannot thank you guys enough and I cannot thank my patrons enough. I appreciate you guys so much. I was gonna talk about that way earlier. I don't know what distracted me. Yeah, something about, you know, being 25, no regrets, my YouTube, lots of hard work, only little subscribers. You guys are still so awesome. Super duper awesome.
If you have been watching my videos all the way up to the end, I really do super appreciate you. It also does mean you've been following my journey on my wisdom teeth. Uh, I gotta say they're, they're, they're hurting real bad. I'm really excited to get them out, honestly, because like I couldn't even speak normally. Like I keep making weird m movements with my mouth that I don't mean to make. Um, and I keep biting my freaking lip. It's awful. Either way, I am really excited. Nine days away, so wish me luck. Oh my gosh. If you enjoyed this super, like, more chill time, I really would appreciate some constructive criticism or anything you got. With that, I bid you adieu, and I love you. And I will see you in the next video. I might have to skip one uh, this summer, though, as a warning. I don't know which one, but just as a warning, I might need a break soon, but I'll let you know. All right, bye. I love you.